Hi everyone, it's me Celine and Benny. This video is going to be a Q&A while I do my everyday makeup, which is this. I just did it. If you want to know how I did this makeup and um, know more about me, I literally tell you my whole life story. Then keep watching, but wait, something else I need to tell you guys. Thank you so much for 100k on YouTube. I, like, I don't know if i'll ever get over this i cannot thank you enough but anyways onto this video because i just talk and not lick your booty hole please it's time to start the video everyone tell him he looks handsome he just got a haircut so this q a but not really organized i just have a bunch of screenshots from instagram and youtube of questions you've asked me actually let me start doing my makeup should i should i do the headband Headband makes things more fun, I guess. I have a lot of questions, so hopefully I can get through them. So I already moisturized and put on sunscreen. I use this Innisfree sunscreen. Um, and I feel like once I moisturize and put on sunscreen, my, my makeup applies very smoothly. And then my concealer is the Lancome Tint Idol Ultra Wear All Over Concealer. This is like my most favorite concealer i've ever owned i think it's because like the color matches really good with me and i just i like how it looks like i really like how it looks i don't use foundation i just use a lot of concealer let's start with some basic questions i'm like forgetting i'm forgetting what i'm doing here my name is celine i'm assuming you already know that but yeah celine tran i am 26 years old which surprises a lot of people i think a lot of it has to do with my voice because I feel like my voice makes me seem a little bit younger, which I've always hated. My birthday is January 21st. My ethnicity, people always get it wrong. Like if you know my last name, then you know my ethnicity. I guess I look kind of ethnically ambiguous, but I'm 100% Vietnamese. Both of my parents are from Vietnam. Um, they immigrated to the US uh, like after the war and I am a second generation Vietnamese American born in the u.s born in texas my parents met here in the u.s hearing about like my parents journey to the u.s is like so it's it makes me like feel really bad because i took so much for granted like growing up but like my mom came to the u.s when she was like in sixth grade uh so when she was really young and she just went with her older brother and sister and she had to leave like the rest of her family and her parents like i can't imagine going anywhere without my parents in the sixth grade so yes i'm 100 percent vietnamese i'll put a picture of my parents right here just because i love them i feel like people guess like every other south east asian ethnicity but not vietnamese i have two older brothers so that's another fact about myself for powder i use the airbrush flawless finish from charlotte tilbury in the shade medium i'm going to bronze with this uh, dior forever natural bronzer oh i'm 5'2 a lot of people ask because i feel like i look pretty petite in my videos uh which because i am and yeah so those are all the basic questions about myself next i'm going on to blush which this is my new favorite blush this is by patrick ta which if you're vietnamese you know is pronounced that i was so shocked when i learned about patrick ta because my mom's uh, last name is the same as his it's that which like there's not a lot of vietnamese people with that last name i love seeing vietnamese people succeed and um, this is uh in the color oh she's different it has a cream blush and then a powder blush so now i'm gonna go into questions about how i got to become a phd student which i feel like is quite a long story so i guess i'll start with undergrad or maybe i'll start with high school so honestly in high school i had like n not really any passion towards any like career i like didn't really know what i wanted to be but growing up in a vietnamese household with my vietnamese immigrant parents they really had big goals and dreams for me and wanted me in like some prestigious career or that's what like i felt and there's just a lot of pressure internally as well um i thought they wanted me to be like some type of doctor not really lawyer i don't think maybe like an engineer doctor something like nice prestigious but also like stable at the same time because like my parents they grew up poor they like came to the u.s with nothing they had a lot of goals for their child and i'm the third child and the only daughter my brothers like went 
do their journey but i always feel like a different pressure on myself they never got mad at my brothers when they didn't get like all a's you know like i had to get all a's and i would get so upset i'm like again i didn't really know who i was gonna be but when i was applying to colleges i was just like okay biology seems like the safe choice to go because i could do something in the medical field i was like maybe maybe like optometry i knew me I could not do anything with any type of surgery, like blood, all that stuff. I don't think I could handle the human body and what is inside and what comes out. I don't think I could do that. So I started undergrad biology major, struggling. First semester, I was like so depressed. I went to college. I had like maybe like two friends that I knew that came from my high school, but I wasn't like super close to them. So, you know, of course we didn't like hang out all the time. And then we weren't like besties or anything. So um, I just like knew them. And there was other students that came from my school, but again, I like didn't talk to them. I was like napping all the time. I was like, I wanna go home. I wanna be with my family. It was hard because it's my first time moving away. Anyways, I did awful second semester awful again but i like eventually started making friends but still doing awful because like i was very clueless going into university i didn't know what was like the norm what classes should i take what would be like a workload that i could handle and so going into like a science major and not having any like duo courses that would transfer or i didn't take any like ap classes i don't think either i was told that i needed to take these two science courses this math course like if i wanted to graduate on time in four years and i know now that like four years you don't have to graduate like if you do great but it's not like everyone takes their own time has their own path i didn't really know that i felt really pressured to finish in four years i was like okay i have to like tack on all of these really hard classes and i was struggling my like advice to anyone going into university and don't really know what they want to do i would say take some exploratory courses take some courses in you know subjects that you are not familiar with you don't know about like because i wasted so much time in biology i waste a lot of time and money i still graduated on four years by the in four years by the way my mental health was awful i pretty sure i failed like chemistry two or something like i failed i failed a course and i in and so i was like okay things gotta change i this is not working for me i'm not even gonna get into any medical school any optometry school with a failing chemistry grade so like well, what am i even thinking why am i even striving for this goal when it's something i don't really want to do oh for my lips i just put the fenty pouticle in my type it's a lip stain but i kind of just pat it on and then i'm going to oops and then i'm putting on this Laneige lip mask junior year which seemed really late but junior year i changed my major to sociology because i didn't know what else to do and there was like one class i took uh like my first or second year and it was a sociology course and i made an a in it and i really enjoyed that course so when i started taking sociology courses i was like oh my god this is like so fun this is like stuff i'm actually interested in. i was learning about you know racism sexism all of the social issues in the world and i was like oh is this what it's like to actually enjoy what you learn still when i got into sociology i didn't know what i would do i applied for a undergraduate research assistant position i didn't get it so i was really really sad but because i applied to that position another professor saw my application then they contacted me and was like hey we have this other research project that i think you would be amazing uh, on and i was like oh my god so every time i get rejected now it's always like it's okay it's not meant to be it'll lead me to something else it always works out at the end but at the time i was very stressed out and like wanted to cry and was probably crying so yeah so then i got onto this research project and i loved it it was on systemic sexism i it was so i was so interested in everything i was learning how to conduct the research and thought it was so exciting like looking at this data that you know no one else has seen um and i get i got to code it i enjoyed it the graduate student i was working with and then the professor i was working with for the research project they were like oh are you interested in like phd programs and i was like maybe but at the same time i was like what what do i do with that i might be stupid but like before i got into college i didn't even know what a phd was like growing up in a really small town i'm not even blaming the small town but like i grew up in a small town and i grew up like not having a lot of big 
future goals for myself like i didn't have like a dream college like i didn't really care where i went i didn't have any like career passions and goals that were like out of the box like that i wanted to strive for they thought i was great which always boosts my confidence you know so i was like okay i think i am gonna do this for my brows i'm using the benefit precisely my brow pencil i worked on that research project for like a year they like taught me so much my graduate research professor is like still my mentor and i still talk to him i'm just very grateful and happy that i was not accepted into the initial research position that i applied for so then i graduate 2019 bachelor's of science in sociology i didn't apply to any phd programs yet this again i didn't figure all this out till like later in my undergraduate studies i'm putting on eyeliner now it's just eyeshadow it's the urban decay eyeshadow and blackout and i'm using this angled liner brush the fall semester after i graduated i decided to take graduate courses and that was a great decision it was actually suggested by i believe my research professor or like the graduate student i was working on they're like you could see what it's like um it'll really help you and then it'll also help with like getting more letters of recommendation and that was like a really great decision i did like make a's in both of my classes so it showed the programs that i applied to like she she can do it she already is doing it so after that semester i finally had a break off from school but it was also when covid hit so that's when i started posting on social media like on tiktok early 2020 i wasn't taking any classes i was bored out of my mind so that's when i started doing tiktok and then i also found out i got accepted into a phd program it's the same university i went as an undergrad which thank god i was just like if i didn't get accepted there like who's gonna accept me because they're the ones who wrote me letters of recommendation so that's just kind of my academic history and now i'm a third year phd student struggling ah oh, i forgot so i usually put my bronzer on my eyelids I forgot to do that step so i'm gonna do that now so enough of that talk even though i know it's a big part of my channel so i just wanted to get that out there because i do get a lot of questions on it i know this is another question i get asked very often how do i balance school and life i don't know if you noticed but my personal life is very busy i have like weddings every month i have like baby showers i have baptisms i have so much going on i have someone's birthday and just on top of like the regular holidays i just take it one day at a time and it's like i know that's like not really good advice i feel like i'm in a constant state of like stress and anxiety which i you probably don't want to hear but if i'm gonna be honest with you some days i just want to do nothing and sometimes i do give myself that one day where i just do nothing no thoughts no deadlines to fulfill no family stuff no nothing with my friends just me and ben hanging out on the couch all day long it's one of my favorite days always just on the go and then like i live like away from like my family and friends so like every time there's an event i have to drive like three hours home or like two hours and it makes me really sad sometimes because i'm like i should really be enjoying these moments with my friends and family but I, sometimes i just can't help but feel like very stressed out because i have so so much to do this is a natasha denona palette it's one of my favorite palettes because i think with my skin tone i look better in these warmer tones but for my inner corner highlight which i use every day is this shadow this palette is in peak the shadow i like can't there's nothing on the back i don't know what the name is it's not like a stark white like inner eyeshadow uh highlight because i feel like that doesn't look good on me so if you're wondering how i balance everything i honestly don't know i just get through it one day at a time and then like i look back i'm like oh i really did all of that so now continuing on with how i got into social media i actually started tiktok with art videos i'm a girl with a lot of hobbies and interests so i started with art videos i would like paint little mini canvases and do all these things and then of course like everyone else lockdown we were all like baking and doing all these little recipes so that's how i like i was like okay i'm gonna like film this and like i was like pumping out videos every single day that was like my only will to like get out of bed and i moved out i started doing like what i eat in a day and started vlogging more like day in my life and yeah i just been like super consistent since i started i post at least one video a week usually multiple videos a week on tiktok and then 
like a year over a little over a year ago i started my youtube so it still shocks me that i have reached 100k so thank you guys i really get like kind of upset at the idea that social media will become like a job to me and not much like a hobby anymore because i started my social media platform to just have like a safe space a creative outlet i feel like super super lucky that this community i have on like tiktok and youtube there's everyone's so nice everyone's so nice and so sweet especially on youtube it feels like a little more intimate because on tiktok you see like it's just like a few seconds and then you get like skipped or whatever i feel like on youtube like if people are watching your videos especially my freaking 30 long minute videos they really care about me and it makes me like i don't know it makes me kind of emotional thinking about it like y'all leave comments talking about your day or how like what you're doing and i feel like we're friends i feel like i feel like i'm there with you on this journey like you're like here on this journey with me so <sighs> sorry i'm like on a tangent now what are we talking about let's get into some fun questions yeah i just curled my eyelashes with the shiseido curler how can you afford to live alone how do you manage your finances if we're gonna be real i most of my income comes from social media so sponsorships mostly from tiktok because i do more sponsorships on tiktok i have the largest following on tiktok that's where i get paid the most but i also do youtube and ig sponsorships like campaigns and stuff and it's always very exciting to me because like sometimes i get to work with brands that i grew up loving i did a campaign for m&ms on instagram and i love m&ms like i i go through like snack phases but like for the longest time i loved the m&m brownies i love that one and the m&m cookies one is also very good i did one for raisin canes I love Raising Canes. I did a few for Kroger. A long time ago, one of my first ones was Walmart, which I was like, the Walmart? <laughs> so, oh, and McDonald's. McDonald's was like probably one of the biggest ones I did. And I was like, ah. But also, I do get a salary from the university I go to because I uh, was a TA. Uh, and now I'm like a co-lecturer. So I do get paid for that, which is not that much like it's not a lot like it's enough to like cover rent and maybe my car payment but anything else like recreational like groceries like extra fast food all that stuff it would be very hard to live on that salary um and i know i'm very very grateful for the position i'm in to be able to make money in other ways so into the fun questions now like they're really fun ones how long does it take you to finish a book depends on the length of the book and how interested i am in it i can finish a book in a day i can finish a whole series in a weekend if i wanted to but um honestly i've realized probably a sign of my bad mental health because like binge reading is like actually so bad i don't remember a lot of times what i read i just i like read a book so fast i end and i, I feel empty inside so empty but like i know if i like the book or not but if anyone asks me like for book recommendations or any type of recommendations i'm like god i need like three days to figure this out because i don't know right now my rate is probably like two to three days to finish a book if i'm really deep in the trenches it like a day even like a night <laughs> like i can like just lay in bed uh, I read on my Kindle a lot or like my Kindle app on my phone so I'll just be scrolling in bed and then it's like 5 in the morning and I finish book current favorite musical artist I guess it's also like question just like what kind of music I listen to what music I enjoy I go through music phases so right now I'm listening to a lot of R&B throwbacks which is something I always go back into I listen to like a lot of old songs I don't listen to a lot of new music my favorites right now are like Neo mario oh have you heard paula de anda i believe that's her name oh, i love her songs <laughs> like i listen to all sorts of music i'm not gonna say everything because i don't listen to everything you know regular pop music i love pop punk i love k-pop i love 
Vietnamese pop. I love like finding music in like different languages. It just gets me so excited. Like I love French music. I have some Filipino songs. I have Spanish music. I love Spanish music. Does anyone know Michelle Branch? I love Michelle Branch. Oh, like think of One Tree Hill soundtrack. I love that type of music. Someone said, can you speak Vietnamese? Unfortunately, not very well. Um, enough to survive uh, if I got stranded in Vietnam, maybe. I feel like I do understand it well or specifically like the dialect of like my parents and how they speak sounds very different from like when you know I'm watching like a Vietnamese show or listening to Vietnamese music. Sometimes in Vietnamese songs, I'm just like, is this Vietnamese? Like, I girl, I don't know what you're saying. Someone asked, what's my favorite book, movie, album, TV show, podcast at the moment? I hate questions. Well, no, I don't hate this question, but I, in general, I hate answering. Like, what's my favorite? Because I don't know. I'm a very indecisive person. But, uh, let me think. Gosh, oh, a movie. I love Me Before You. I love any any type of media that like makes me cry that shows signs of a really good book and movie that i really enjoy for books oh my favorite series is uh jade city or green bone green bone saga the green bone saga is that what it's called but i'm like oh this is my favorite i don't even know what it's called but the jade city tr trilogy one of my favorite books it's like a uh, it's like a fantasy with great world building. There's a little bit of romance. Um, it's really like, it's about family and politics. And I just, I think that's an, an amazing book. What's it like living alone? I love it. I love being able to decorate my own space. Uh, I love being here with my silly little doggy. You know, Benny, he gives me a reason to live, a reason to like go outside. I don't know how I would be like living completely alone, no doggy. He makes living alone very enjoyable. I love like, he just makes me so happy. You know, living alone, not having to like be in contact with other people. Cause I just, I'm, I don't know. I just like having my own space, happy little space that I can just do whatever I want, you know? I can use the restroom with all the doors open. I can pick my nose and nobody's gonna be watching me. I can pick a wedgie. It's like, I can do whatever in here and I love it. If you were given a chance to travel around Asian countries, where would you go and why? So I have been to a few. I've been to Vietnam, of course, and also Thailand. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. I really, since I've kind of been to a few South east asian countries i would love to like visit japan and korea obviously like who doesn't i don't know i would love to travel everywhere in asia like do a whole asia tour maybe my dream is to be a travel vlogger and just travel everywhere and eat the food do you also listen to k-pop and watch anime no i do not watch anime but my boyfriend does um i just i don't know i can't really get into it nor do i think i can put on another type of media because i already binge so many different types of media but i do listen to k-pop well not as much anymore i listen to just like what's popular of course like right now like new jeans is popular we all love new jeans besides new jeans it's like blackpink been big fans since they debuted i totally forgot i was doing my makeup uh i was a super big k-pop fan when i was in high school so like 2012 2013 that's when i entered my k-pop phase which was honestly a very fun time like k-pop now feels so different than like k-pop back then and if you're curious my favorite group was xo like my favorite 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 group in the world is xo they still have a special place in my heart and my favorite from xo was sehun he was my bias and uh, i loved xo oh i also loved girls generation i also loved tay so like their little what is that called like a little subgroup i bought their album i thought they were beautiful and gorgeous and i think that was the bad part of it like i wanted to be like them and look like them which obviously i was never gonna look like them and i think that was a little detrimental to my mental health especially during this like time period where i like high school is just like a very vulnerable time and you're growing and you're already insecure and then like when i first started getting into like korean like dramas and k-pop i was like so excited because you know in the u.s there's not a lot of 
Asian representation in media, especially back then. So I was like so excited. I was like, oh my goodness, like look at these cool like Korean like shows and they're so pretty and I get to indulge in this Asian media that I like I've never got to experience before. Just K-pop was like a whole new world and they were all so skinny and so pretty and so pale and like I wanted to look like them. I wanted to be them, but obviously I was not gonna be them. And once I like got out of like my K-pop phase, I was like, okay, this is good for me and my mental health and uh, my body image especially. Okay, so someone asked about my boyfriend and how we met and began dating. So I don't really show my boyfriend in my videos just because like this is my space, like my space. And like one of the things I really don't like is um couple, like sorry if you do this or sorry if you enjoy them, but couple like tiktoks or couple like youtube channels where it's like they are they're like pranking each other or like setting up these like i don't know surprises and stuff i'm like oh god all of this is like so planned or it seems so planned and it seems like not real so i like to keep my relationship like more private but like not a secret like y'all know i have a boyfriend we met in undergrad he went to the same university as me so i went into college with a boyfriend and i broke up with him like my junior year or was it junior sophomore year i don't know it was kind of a long term it was a long-term relationship my first relationship i was like i'm gonna go into my hot girl era like i'm a college girl i'm gonna be in my hot girl era i'm gonna like talk to so many boys <laughs> obviously that it's not me not the case because uh, I downloaded tinder just for fun. All of my friends we like would sit on the couch and we would swipe through tinder together Like just for fun like not serious at all And then my friend was swiping for me and she's like, oh my goodness. This is Matt Like he, he her boyfriend at the time is like one of his closest friends She was like you should swipe right on him like he's super nice and funny and he looks like um, The teen wolf guy. What is his name? Oh, the main guy in Teen Wolf. I forgot his name. Um, and in my head, I'm like, I was a Dylan O'Brien girl. Like, <laughs> I did swipe right on him. And then we were like a little flirty. And then we ended up meeting at a bar. Like me and my girlfriends were going out. And then he like was going out with his friends. And then we like met up. I personally think it was pretty good that we met at a bar because it really helped that I was a little bit drunk uh and buzzed it made it easier to talk to him because i am very awkward and a little antisocial. and then after that we kept talking and then we went on our first date and we've been together ever since so i did not enter any hot girl era uh because the first guy i talked to on tinder ended up being my boyfriend and we've been dating for over four years now someone said tips for starting social media so i would be like just be really consistent like really consistent like just keep posting and make content that feels like natural to you or else it's not going to be fun someone said how do you manage the creepy people from your social media i get paranoid all the time luckily for me like 90 plus percent of my following is women i am for the girls so <laughs> um i don't really get a lot of creepy like dms or anything which i'm so grateful for like i haven't gotten anything really creepy Ooh, someone said are you a fan of xo yeah girl i i really was i don't really know what's going on with them right now someone said do you like cats uh i'm more of a dog person because i grew up like owning dogs so that's just like what i'm comfortable with uh cats sometimes i just don't know what they're feeling like my brothers have cats he has two cats and they're like so smart but every I, i'm so scared they're gonna claw me um and i can't like really read their face but like benny he just has the sweetest little eyes and i can just like look at them all day someone said go to boba order so i don't really get boba like ever or often but when i do i like a winter melon tea and this is very controversial but i'm not big on like tapioca balls it depends on the drink though but i do like the crystal boba and winter melon tea with like a milk cap also avocado smoothies with like the tapioca balls I, I i like that i love avocado smoothies and for the longest time like nobody like knew what that was or nobody i knew like drank it it's like a very Vietnamese like Southeast Asian dessert type of thing but I love avocado smoothies someone asked my favorite Ghibli movie I have a really special place in my heart for Kiki's delivery service just because I had that like on VCR growing up and I watched it 
all the time and i loved it i think the nostalgia that comes with it for me uh is why i love it favorite vietnamese dish do you like bun bò hue and i do like bun bò hue not my favorite though but there's so many so many good vietnamese noodle dishes that's like more than pho my favorite is bun riu i could eat bun riu like every other day and be like happy for the rest of my life it's like a crab and pork soup and tomato it's like a tomatoey like base and it has like crab meat crab and pork meatballs oh, i love the meatballs and then sorry benny is digging over there and it has like pork ribs in it too i love it what is your recent hobby i just bought a sewing machine i'm very excited about it and i'm definitely gonna make a video or a series maybe of like learn how to sew with me or like my sewing projects and i mostly want to get into like doing like re reworking clothes i already have so look at me being sustainable what's the reason why you started doing youtube videos like when i did tiktok they're just so short i have lots of things to share lots of things to say so i'm just very very grateful that people are interested and things i do and say so thank you but yeah that's kind of just it like i just wanted like a longer video platform to share more of me someone said what kind of doctor are you going to be so not a medical doctor of course but um i'll have a, a doctorate uh in sociology a little story about how i got benny benny they want to know about you so i did post a tiktok about this but let's see september of 2020 it was a few months after like i moved out and i was very lonely and i was like i need a dog because it's kind of scary living on your own i looked at animal shelters during 2020 it was very hard to find a dog because everyone wanted a dog during that time and you would have to like schedule appointments and have all of these requirements one of them was like having a yard which I did not have a yard uh, so I didn't like pass a lot of applications I tried some local animal shelters and I tried like some online um, then I just was like I'm gonna go on Craigslist so I looked up Yorkie because like I grew up with Yorkie so I was like oh maybe I'll find a cutie little Yorkie nothing and then I looked up Yorkshire Terrier Yorkshire Terrier and I found this really sketchy like grainy little picture of Benny he looks nothing like he does now it was like so sketchy. I was like, eh, I'm gonna take the risk. It was like $300 rehoming fee. He was four years old. And I was just like texting the person. And then I was like asking, oh, like, can I ask like why y'all are like giving him up? And it was because his previous, own this is actually a very sad story. His previous owners were like an older couple. And it was the husband who wanted to adopt Benny and Benny was his, but he passed away and so the wife was no longer to able to take care of Benny because they had like two bigger dogs which they left outside she was like yeah we can't leave him outside because the eagles or the hawks or something are gonna swoop down and get him and I'm like oh my god because at first I was like could I see him first before I decide and then she was like yeah and so we we met up I saw him and like the moment I saw him I was like take my money take my money i want him he was like so tiny and he was so happy and he's like a super chill dog i think that's because his old owners were old and that's how i have my little ben my little pride and joy favorite clothing stores i don't think i have a favorite and lately i just do not know where i've been shopping let's see zara sometimes is a hit or miss brandy i love like their basics like their little tank tops they get a lot of my tank tops from there and jeans i like levi's jeans i do have a pair of zara jeans that i love i love reformation for like their dresses and stuff but it's, it's expensive so i usually just shop during their sales i sometimes find good stuff at like marshall's and tj maxx abercrombie which uh i have a lot of stuff from them uh because i was really into them like maybe last year but like now i like looking at their website and stuff i don't really see anything that i like which is probably a good thing so i'm gonna stop the video there i did finish my makeup by the way um the mascara i used was the maybelline lash sensational sorry i was like kind of forgetting that i was doing this tutorial when i finish my makeup i usually go in and powder a second time because i kind of get like oily in my t-zone and then sometimes i'll retouch on the lippy this is not my favorite shade but i can't find anything else this is the tarte maracuja juicy lip love this stuff and this one is a little bit too red oh it 
looks good on camera. Oh, sometimes I'll do a brow gel because like, oh, well, you can see this eyebrow kind of doesn't like to listen to me. Yeah, that's my makeup, my everyday makeup. And that's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I don't know. There's so many more questions. So let me know if you want an, a second one with just like fun me answering fun questions because I got like my whole backstory in this video. So it was kind of long. But thank you so much for watching. And again, thank you so much for 100K. I will never get over this. Okay, me and Ben love you. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.